I will introduce these two, but they need no introduction and they can obviously also introduce themselves. But Heidi and Cap uh, run the Greenwich crew uh, on the women's side and obviously have had an incredible amount of success doing so. It's been fun for me uh, kind of watching their climb in, over the years. Uh, they were reminding me of the first time we ever interacted on a on the trail following a race as our boats raced each other. Oh, man, that must've been six years ago now or something. Uh, Sarasota and, somewhere. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, um, but I will let them take it off. So I think this is, um, we're, we still have some trickling in, but we're kind of leveling out if you guys want to get started. And uh, attendees, I can moderate in the chat. So please, you know, put your questions in there and if there's moments to kind of bug these two, but you know, during their slides and their videos, then uh, I'll try and bug them if it's a pertinent question to the time. So let's take it off. Okay, um, I think I'm supposed to share my screen, right? It's always yes. good to start with technical. The internet. <laughs> Here you go, guys. This is a what, this is like, you're in my mind now. Is it sharing? Oh God. Sharing a lot. <laughs> this cup of disaster. Okay, um, I'm Catherine, and this is Heidi, and we are the co-head um, coaches of the women's crew team at Greenwich. We have an amazing staff that we work with, um, Paul Rogerberg, and now our new assistant coach, Nicole, along with Susanna Mills, so just like a good, good kind of team that we work with um but this picture is of Heidi and I so that's who's here um and this is our team so Heidi's going to kind of give an overview of our team just so you guys get a sense of what we're working with and how we how we sort of do this um for some reason I had this written down as your slide but I'm happy to take it away okay. uh, so we have um we have a large group of athletes um, on the varsity side. We have 53 athletes um, and three to four coaches at a time. So that gives us a, you know, 16 to one ratio. Um, usually each coach has about two eights. Um, and if we're lucky enough, we'll kind of break that down as the season goes on a little bit. Um, we, in addition to that, we have this year, we have an extraordinary group of novices last year, for example, we had a small group of 10 novices, which I think, spoke to 2020 in itself. Um, and this year we have three plus eights. Um, so I think, you know, we, we get the cards that were dealt. Um, we don't do a ton of recruiting. We do some outreach, but we don't do a ton. I think Nicole, our um, novice slash U17 um, coach does a really great job of outreach now. So we're hoping to increase those numbers. Uh, we are on a really variable title way. Um, it is very tidal, like extreme tides, um, windy, high traffic. Um, there are days that we can't, like purely just can't get out because the tide sinks so low. Um, or it's a, you know, Friday afternoon and you're having a lot of boat traffic. Um, Saturday mornings are great though, usually. Usually we have that day for us. Um, and we practice 2.5 hours a day, um, six days a week. Um, this, you know, Catherine and I were joking that we thought we were on camera when we are asked to do a um, presentation on technique because it's something that, uh, at least on our men's side, they frequently will make fun of the technique of our boats. Um, our overarching concepts, though, you know, those are the things that we stick to and, and we have to, you know, we have to go with that because that's the only things that Catherine and I really know. Um, so do no harm, keep it simple and be adaptable. So um, I think we're gonna go to the next slide now. And do you want, uh, what, do you wanna take this one or do you want me to do this one? I'm happy to do this one. You, you have, you're on mute. This is you. Okay, great. Um, so our objective as a program, um, we, we want athletes to come in, um, whether it's as middle schoolers or as novices or even as 10th graders, 11th graders, um, and learn from start to finish kind of like the holistic approach to rowing. So that means that 
we want them to understand physically what they're doing, mentally what they're doing, um, how to be better on the water and off the water. Um, and we really, above all, we want them to leave this program happy and enjoy every day in the program. Obviously, that is something that is easier said than done. Um, it's it's something that we continuously, you know, are struggling with and, and working with. But I think uh, we have a really proud group of alumni that we just we love and we get to stay in connection with um but during their time here we really want them just to get this base level of of understanding of the stroke right so the like the what the how the why like why are you putting the blade in the water like what is it doing and how is that contributing to the success of the boat overall um, and that's something that starts out with our novice group you know kind of in a very slow way but we have to to accelerate quickly because our, our fall racing season starts in mid September, two to three weeks after we, after we begin. Um, and our ideal as coaches is that someone continues rowing for however, for however long they want, whether that's four more years, you know, or for the rest of their life, you know, that for us is, is a big meter of our success. Um, and so our next, you know, how we do this, this is, we say do no harm. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> we're doing our best. We can't always guarantee that. Uh, so we start out with our novice grouping. Uh, we're very fortunate to be working with performance physical therapy, uh, which is the physical therapy uh, group that is located next door to our water club. Um, the owner of it is the father of three of our rowers. Um, and so we've been very, lucky to benefit from this. What they do with our athletes um, in the beginning of their time, especially in the beginning of their time on varsity, each September they get a screening. Um, so what that screening says is what the athletes weaknesses are, right? Like if they are, if they're weaker on one side in their hip, um, whether they are more prone to a back injury, whether they've had previous back injuries, whether they are on the verge of like having a, you know, if they're, if they're having pain in certain motions. Um, and what this tells us is like, okay, these athletes can't do deadlifts. These athletes may find, you know, more weakness as we do like a three by five K or something like that. Um, and what it has forced us to do since our time, I think we started working with them five, I want to say five to six years ago. Um, it's forced us to start just focusing, I mean, mainly on core strength, right? That is that is our priority. They have worked with us to create this like really great program that the athletes do every single day after practice. Um, and that that kind of in turn helps us just to, you know, not have bad habits as you're moving physically through the stroke. Um, if you have the foundation, then that's great. And I think that we have been able to find some success through that. Um, we totally understand that like we are a large program and we have, you know, this has fallen into our laps, um, but it's something that, you know, if you are looking at a, something like a base thing that athletes can do, I think just core strength is, is something that we have found to be incredibly beneficial. It's not novel, it's not groundbreaking. I understand that. Um, so as we go through here, we want the athletes to not have bad habits. And that is something that you can look at on many levels. Um, you can look at first, like, how are they talking to themselves, right? Like, how are they, how are they going through their day to day? Like, as they take this journey from being like a new, a new rower all the way through to their senior year, are they, um, being kind to themselves? Are they sleeping? Are they prioritizing homework? Um, and then in the stroke itself, right? Like, are they collapsing at the catch, right? Like, how do you avoid collapsing at the catch? How do you stay engaged all the way through to the finish? Um, and I think that all these things kind of tie into each other because if we have that core strength, then it's easier to kind of negate the bad habits in the first place. Um, with our coaching, you know, I think that Catherine and I have been on this coaching journey, especially, you know, we both were involved with collegiate programs, but at high school athletes are, a really different, really special group of, of individuals. Um, we really want our coaching to be specifically about feedback um, and, and learning to be coached. I think sometimes 
athletes in the past have had coaches that say things in a negative way um, that they interpret it as like feedback is is criticism uh, when in reality feedback is kind of the most important thing because you, you we want to be on this journey together right like our coaching staff our rowers even the parents we want to be on a journey together to make everyone better the entire time um, and it's just it's going to be this balance right it's not perfect we mess up a lot um, and not everyone's gonna, gonna enjoy every single moment so I think that's important to to kind of remember as as a coach um, again as I said before like our our overall is that we want them to go somewhere else like we want them to have this amazing base where if they are lucky enough to go on and row and row in college afterwards that they have the basics and that they can fit into any program, whether that's a club, a D3, a D1 program, you know, we want them to take it as far as they want and we want them to be well prepared in this process. Okay, take myself off mute. Um, so in order to, I think, have rowers that can sort of move through this process, um, I think for Heidi and I, the biggest thing is like keeping it very simple. Um, rowing is and can be made very complicated. And I think when you get to some of the finer points, like absolutely there's debate, there's, um, you know, just a lot of nuance to taking good strokes. But um, I think in our experience and, you know, I speak as a very untechnical rower, like the more simple you can keep something, the concepts that you can keep them, um, the simpler the concept, the easier it is to execute. Um, and I think for us to like the simpler the concept, um, the easier it is to communicate it. So I think like, obviously I think we would all agree that coaching is communication. Um, so for us, it starts with like, are you communicating your objectives well? And if we keep them simple, then we can communicate them well. Um, I think we also have the ability to have each other as like a little bit of a, a dialogue. Like if we come in and we sort of learn something new, um, you know, we can first try it out between the two of us. And I think always asking like, you know, is this something that we understand first and foremost? If I don't understand something well, then I cannot teach it well. Um, so I think, you know, especially like I would say like coming I learn a lot going and, and listening to other coaches talk, but sometimes like very truly when the nuances escape me, if I try to come back and teach that, then it's just not going to, it's not going to go well. So first and foremost, I have to really come back. And I think the two of us are like, do we understand what we're saying? Um, and I think that then that's really important because I think, you know, you can get out in the launch and you have this like moment where you're like oh I learned this really cool thing and I want to really teach it to my athletes and you start having this conversation on the launch and you look at your athletes and they turn and they are just like gone like they they their faces they're just they don't they could care less learning about something really technical and so I think um that's important and then the other part of it is that like if you don't understand it they're high schoolers they're gonna like see right through you so I think um just being kind of honest about what's going on and simplifying your concepts in terms of like literally just get the blade in the water hang on it for as long as possible have a good time hanging on it and and do it again um i think the part where heidi's saying like you know yeah definitely we're gonna keep reinforcing like being strong sitting up put the blade in the water move the boat do it again um a lot of it is that um you know we kind of keep to a very i think small toolbox of drills i would say um and then we ask our athletes to try and make a lot of the changes at pace and at pressure. Um, we do do drills, you know, we go out there, we try to take advantage of good water when we get it. Um, but I think we see a lot of like spending an immense amount of time trying to get an athlete to make a change only to see that like, as soon as you kind of make it and bring it up to pace, bring it up to pressure, it goes away. So really trying to convey and, and help athletes do pressure changes. Um, so you know, asking them to make the change, you know, we'll do a hard piece, you know, kind of talk about what changes need to be made. Um, it is a holistic approach. So kind of talking about how they're making the change and how it affects the boat as a unit more as, as opposed to like, oh, like 
yes, if you hold your elbow up, you know, you hold something up, you, you sit up, you make a change personally, but like, let's, let's make sure that we're reinforcing it as a boat concept, as a boat moving concept. Um, so just again, that simple too, like, is the boat moving faster when you make the, make the change? What changes do make the boat go faster? Um, and as I said before, like, we get these kids after, you know, you know, 20, 2020, 2021, we got them after they were doing like Zoom school. Like they just, they, they just want to come and have fun. Um, they're not here to sit around and like get lectured. Um, I think bringing in small bites of technical information is really helpful. And I think they do have like, as they get better, you can see that they, you know, athletes who have been rowing, you know, going into their junior or senior year, or like they're, there are athletes who have a really strong desire to like kind of break down the nitty gritty with you. And so, you know, making sure that those athletes are kind of getting the time to talk about it. But, you know, in general, I think on a day-to-day -day practice, you know, especially in the beginning, in the fall, um, you know, when you get back out on the water, they just, they want to row, they want to go hard. So it's kind of like, again, like Heidi said, finding the balance between giving feedback, coaching, and just really making this fun. This is play for them. Um, the more you can do drills that end up being a little bit more playful, a little bit more like competitive drills, right? Like sometimes we'll do, I would say like, you know, a lot of pairs rowing and like kind of like a little bit of pairs racing, letting them make changes like that. Um, I think that brings in that competitiveness and the play, but I think otherwise, you know, even when you're doing a lot of drills, they just, you lose them pretty quickly. And, you know, the, if you lose them at that sort of, I think it's hard to get them back. And then also you don't want them to lose the sort of joy and the love of rowing. And if you just are sitting there hammering home drills till they're perfect, these kids are just gonna walk away. Um, and I think that will also shorten the, the longevity of their rowing career. Um, but also like when we're doing a lot of our technical stuff, I think um, we do try and, you know, again, work with varying, we have 56 kids on our team, you know, some kids want to watch a video, some kids like, want to take home the video, they want to sit there, they want to analyze it, you know, sometimes, you know, they don't even like, some kids have no idea what they're looking at, you know, and then also, um, you know, that we, we bring the coxswains in, we do, you know, some kids need you to sit on an erg and, and be like, no, this is how you do it. Some kids, you know, they just want to be left alone, we sort of have to, you know, find a way to communicate to all the varying learning styles. Um, you know, sometimes if you have them teach a concept, that's also like a really good idea. And then sometimes you just have to know when to walk away because, um, you know, we have a lot of kids who are just, they want to do it exactly the way they want to do it. We want to get the most out of them. We want to help them as long as they're really not putting themselves in a position to hurt themselves. I think sometimes we just, you know, we have an honest conversation. If you're not making a change, if you're not rowing, you know, there might just be a wall you reach in terms of what boats you'll move up to. But like, again, you know, I'll coach you as much as you can coach you. And if that's not something you're receptive to, we'll be honest that you're not like making the changes, not being receptive to it. And then we kind of like, you know, I feel like we come to an agreement um, because I think that that can be hard too, right? If like, the coach is always coaching you and you just feel like you're not getting it that also lessens the enjoyment um so we have to decide what battles also we want to sort of come to um so the next slide is focusing on the big picture which um is Heidi yeah um so for uh, the big picture I think for us um we talk a lot about like defining success on our team. And when we have team meetings, um, really one concept that I think everyone would be familiar with is that our 5V is just as important as the 1V. Um, we are really truly only as fast as our, our 5V will be. Um, and we need them to be strong, engaged, um, really just, just focused on, you know, on getting better and getting faster and moving up. Um, because if we don't have full engagement of the team, it, it kind of falls apart quickly. Um, the big question is like, will all five eights row the same? Absolutely not. You know, we, Catherine and I, like, again, like, we're going to show you some videos in a little bit, but our technical focus is not 
yeah, I think like how we've found speed. Um, when you have, you know, a big group of athletes, whether it's, you know, 50 athletes or, or 80, including the novices, like we want the basic motion to be the same. Um, and every year that we have, you know, we'll have a different stroke seat. We'll have, you know, different athletes. They all have to adapt to, to finding the way to move the boat the best. Um, strength really, really matters. Uh, it's challenging to row the same stroke from the 1V to the 5V because the force that they put on the blade is different. Um, it's, you know, I think that they can then try their best, but, um, you know, we had an eight last year, um, our varsity eight that I would say, you know, if you just looked at it from afar, it was not pretty to look at. Um, but I think the, the basic mechanics of it were important, right? Like they were getting their legs down together. They were really finding a lot of power in the moments that they were connected, um, and I think that they were able to, you know, when they first started out the spring season, they were a little bit like a bull in a china closet. Like it sometimes went backwards, you know, sometimes, you know, it was beaten by a, a savvier 2V group that was a little bit smaller. Um, but then when they were able to figure out how to apply the power the best, um, that's when they started to find some more success. Um, so our big picture is, you know, athletes really, really moving together to the best of their ability, um, but also knowing why they're showing up to the boathouse. Um, that's a really important piece of the puzzle for us because I think sometimes athletes are signed up by parents, right? They're like, ah, oh, rowing, you know, like it's a great sport. We want you to be involved in that. You, I think that's really great as a starting point, um, but we want our athletes to be engaged in the entirety of the program from top to bottom. Um, and top to bottom means they may volunteer with a middle school program. May, they may volunteer with our outreach program. They may, you know, they're just as excited about the novices results um, as their, their varsity team members. And in addition, like really being invested in the men's team success as well, right? Like, I think we're only as strong as like we can be unless like if we were all divided and going in different directions, then it's hard to have a fast boat house. Um, and, you know, I think, also like what they want to get out of it is a big picture, right? Like sometimes I think athletes will come in as novices and they're like, I want to get recruited to college. And you're like, okay, well, you know, we make it very clear that we are not a college recruiting service. If college recruiting comes as a byproduct of what they've done over four years, that's excellent. Um, but they need to understand, like, you want to make the boat go fast. And we said this before, but it's fun to go fast with your friends. That is our big picture. So I would say like probably, I mean, it, it, anyway, like I think, you know, the, this is sort of the part where, I don't know, this is your slide, but I thought I helped, you know, <laughs> um, basically like in that big picture, I think we just like, again, we don't like, we don't dwell on the technique. I mean, I think we have these parameters that we work with. Like we have like, you know, the blade, like we row with fat twos and best bullies. That's where we are. That's what we have. That's what we do. Um, just like the bodies that show up and walk through the through the boathouse doors like we're just not here to nitpick or like make like perfection is not our end goal and I think that like Heidi would agree if I said that like very truly I don't know that I've ever I don't know what a perfect stroke is I think um and so because we're not like kind of going through this perfection we're we're always kind of it's always a dialogue about what what is making the boat go fast? You know, who is making the boat go fast? Looking around, I think um, Heidi pointing out that like, you know, we have five eights on the water and, you know, the I think the, the conversations they have, like those are some of the best teaching tools that they can, you know, like, did you lose a piece to the JV? Why? Well, they were either rowing better, sitting up, you know, like they were getting their blades in a little faster, you know, they were handling the rougher water, like, all of these things can probably teach the rowing stroke and a little bit better than we can sometimes. So I think letting those conversations, letting the practices kind of, you know, be part and parcel of the teaching process. And, um, you know, again, like there are certain things that we do know, we do know that we row with big blades. So we do know that like, you know, we have to be careful. We have to make sure that they can support this, you know, they can support the, the stroke, you know, are there compromises we have to make because of that? Yes, you know, I think 
they're probably people are like oh well you row for a program where you can get unlimited access to things we don't have unlimited access like we picked a blade we <laughs> this is what we're using right now like we have to use it across the board we have to use it for comparison um keeping things as similar as possible to look across um, so that kids can go in and out of different boats and you know one isn't specifically rigged for one crew or another until you know very very long down the line in terms of like a spring season so um i think that's just like you know kind of running it as interchangeable and then letting adaptability be you know part of that so getting in and working through being adaptable in the boat um and i would say like you know this is what works for us um i think heidi's put this bullet point in there as like a you can't compare yourself to other programs like you know every time we go out and race we look across and we say oh god like and it's not that we're not proud i mean we are absolutely like you know we talk about having athletes who will row till the wheels fall off like that's our style and that's what we're proud of um, we are very aware that other people know more than us and row like row really well so you know that's you know we appreciate what's out there we appreciate and strive to to push and make our athletes better we're not sitting here saying okay we'll work this you know sitting around we're always working at being better about these things but sometimes at the end of the day you have to kind of like do what you know and then get better as you go we're you know we're in a six-year process you know, hopefully we're getting better and better at communicating and, and, and getting better technically, but that's where we're at. Did you see um, Deb had a question that we wanted sure. to answer? Um, uh, Deb's question, I think, can everyone see this? I'm not sure if everyone can see it, but it says, um, with five eights, how much individual movement between boats do you do? Meaning um, to keep the boats the same for a certain period of time, race season, two weeks, three hours, whatever. Um, we do a lot of boat movement. Um, we, I would say, don't really finalize lineups until right before a race. Um, and that's sometimes like, it's not necessarily on purpose. Um, I think we wanna make sure that we are keeping our eyes open to athletes, um, whether they are, you know, PRing on a 5K or whether their boat just won't lose, you know, like you put together, this happened to us a million times this fall that we were like, ah, yeah, this is the 3B and then like, you know, if Ivy would walk through them, um, maybe that says more to us about our coaching abilities. Um, but I think, you know, we want to just keep our eyes open and, and we definitely keep things fluid, um, more towards the top end. That's when things get a little bit more stagnant. Like you're not moving as much. Um, but I think we keep our eyes open. And I think that is a, I think that is a, the technical, like, I think that is a way that we keep this is the, another question came in like that's how we keep you know the 5b athletes engaged i think like i think we also um you know as we've gone through the process i think as we've become a little bit better at communicating and i think simplifying too i think um explaining to you know athletes in the 5b that like basically you know it's not rocket science what what the 1b is doing is not any different sometimes than what you're doing it's just like how you said like it's just the force on the handle so if you guys can sit up and, you know, plow through them, like by all means have at it. Cause I think, and, and we watch very carefully. I think we, um, we look, we look and we look and we then seat race, you know, like I think if a boat is moving well, I think we're, we're always looking around and then re reshuffling the lineups. And I think that's a big way to, you know, I think keep that 5B motivated, keep the 4B motivated, the 3B. Um, and then, you know, making sure that like when you, you do see an athlete that's like either struggling with a concept or, you know, maybe looks a little checked out, you know, coming in and saying like, hey, your body language is telling me that like one, you're either having a hard time with this or you don't want to do this. And I think that goes back to the point where, you know, yeah, it doesn't seem 100% related to technique, but if an athlete is not invested in being here, then, you know, they're not going to take invested strokes, right? So like, I think that's the correlation between like, you know, why are you here? Why, what kind of stroke are you taking? Like, you want to take a massive stroke and you want to make an impact on the program, like take a big stroke, like, you know, eat up the water. Like that's kind of the way we talk about it. And I think that's a concept that like, you know, somebody who's in the 5B, if they're just having fun and they can relate to that kind of grabbing the water and not letting go and, and just really, you know, having fun with that. So that's sort of, I think, 
part of that holistic vision and what our technique is because it's not always great. Um, I think the next one um, is going to load at the video. Um, so this is going to give you a sense of just maybe if, if it doesn't come through for you guys, I'm really sorry. Just let There's it a way to do like the H, like the 1080. Oh yeah. I'm while do it. it's uh, while it's loading, uh, yeah. just because it worked better, Catherine, we were testing it before while you gave when yeah. you gave it a minute. There was a follow up uh, from the same attendee to the previous question. Just what are some of the common answers you get for the why are you here for the two V to five V oh. athletes? I mean, I think they love. I mean, I think what we are I'm not. I, you can. You know, I don't want to, I think they really like this atmosphere of this team. Um, I think that's part of, you know, why we don't go around and, you know, sit with one boat and just like sit and, and talk about like this one, putting this one boat on a pedestal and like kind of, you know, we don't pull out eight rowers and say like, hey, you're really good. Like, this is it. We're going to spend all this time, you know, getting you really good. Like we are like, yeah, we got you know, and I don't know, maybe the rowers in R1V would say, but I think they had a good time. So I don't know that they'd come back with anything, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, an investment. In a, yeah, sorry. I think they're really good at like hyping each other up. Like, I think, you know, we'll, we'll put like, you know, some ideas out there and a lot of our leaders will just run with it. Um, you know, at, at nationals last year, we were really fortunate enough to like bring a lot of boats and, um, it was fun to like watch the group chat, you know, because we'd have a lot of kids back at the hotel watching live results come in and they were just really excited for, you know, every single one of the boats that we were able to bring. Um, but I think at the same time, it's something that like, I would say COVID has been really hard um, to keep that because like we haven't been able to have as many like face-to-face -face team meetings. Um, and I think, you know, we, we like to pause, like we like to keep the train going, but we also like to pause and be like, okay, um, do you remember why you're here, right? Like, don't just bang your head against the wall trying to get faster and faster and faster. Like, you have to be like, where is like the passion behind this? Um, so I think, I mean, I, I do think that the 2V realizes that they're very valuable as well as the 3V and the 4V and the 5V. Um, so it's just, it's taken a lot of work to get to this point. Um, so here's, I hope it comes through. If it doesn't, I'm really sorry. Like here's um, fall 2020. 20 rowing, you know, and I think you can see just strokes at two seat, you know, like some of this um, two seat is a, is a novice in there and she's just learning how to take strokes. I don't know, you, you know, we try, we try really hard to figure out how to take, you know, make the catch good and sit up and. Um, this is also when we, were, we had limited pods. Um, so we weren't able to do a lot of boat movement. A lot was done by like kind of like small boat selection in late August, early September. Um, and so we couldn't move around stuff a lot just because of COVID. But, um, I think just in terms of like what happens here, like, you know, if we're looking at this bow, I would say like, and we're gonna talk about the things we'll do, but like Strokesy looks like she's, you know, like could look a little bit like she's rowing to nowhere in the back end. So, you know, we do a lot of like feet out just to help them learn how to support their finishes, um, but, you know, generally rowing together as best as possible, probably could be a little faster into the water, you know, all the things that you would say, but it, um, you know, I would say seven out of eight of those athletes ended up winning, you know, so I don't know that winning is, again, like I'm not saying winning is like a validation of the technique, I'm just saying that they, they try hard, they do a good job. Um, so the question about the small boats is that um, we we use small boats as a training tool. We don't use small boats um, as a bigger, I mean, you know, if somebody can't move a small boat, then that's like a red flag to us and we have to go back and visit it. You know, a lot of, I would say like, you know, in, in this, I don't know if this video is coming through, um, this is late stage varsity eight. Um, this is like, you know, May like of yeah. You know, it's coming through. It's a little choppier, but it's still okay. coming through. Okay. So stroke seat in this boat, you know, like stroke seat and three seat rode a pair a lot together and it, truth be told, didn't, could not go anywhere for a while. Um, so we spent a lot of time, you know, 
that to us meant that we had to go and really kind of revisit some concepts of the small boat, of boat movement, suspension, you know, like we go back and sort of talk about like, why, you know, why is a boat with, you know, why is this one pair beating you in this, you know, so and that's a little bit of a nice way too to like let them um, sort of, again, instead of us having to go in and say, hey, you know, this isn't working, you know, the boat just kind of says, okay, well, this isn't working. And so they had to kind of up their game a little bit. I don't know. Um, while you, of, while you have the video up, yeah, uh, we just had someone kind of ask what would be some of the terminology you use? I know you mentioned like you worked with them to try and get the catches in quicker, What maybe what is your uh, talk about language that you're using while you're coaching that aspect? We talk about like horizontal pressure a lot and, and hanging on it, you know, cause we want to really, I think it's really easy to try to like scoop the blade through the water to try to like, you know, they, they want to get like as much water as, it on, as possible. But like, if you're just going deep and coming out, you know, we try to let them know that that doesn't actually do anything. Um, so I would say like horizontal pressure and, and hanging on it. And then, you know, I think we say a million times a day, get your blades in, but it doesn't usually work. So we're just trying over here. I think too, like, I think talking about like what they can feel, um, like, again, like this is like a holistic thing, but like not, you know, not just you, but like, you know, talking about what the boat is doing, what we're seeing and like, you know, the idea of like what the bow is doing, really talking about squeezing it out of, you know, trying to get the most out of the stroke. Um, you know, we talk about pressure on the footboards on both ends. We talk about, you know, but again, like really trying to make it something that like, you know, if I were to sit there and explain the stroke to them, I could talk about what I feel, what I, what I can do, you know, in terms of like what I feel in my body when I do this. Um, I think, you know, it's nice Heidi and the coxswain. So I think sometimes I allow, I would say she can talk more about the blade work than I feel like I can. I can talk about it, how it relates to my, you know, feeling of like really just hanging and sending away, like what, you know, so that there's kind of like, almost like we get to come at it from two different angles. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, here's another, this is, I don't know, Heidi can- Yeah, this was this, um, this was this fall at the CRI Fall Classic. Um, we, you know, we raced five eights total, um, our top three eights, we split. It's unfortunate that it's all choppy, sorry guys. Um, we split um, our top three eights into even eights, like completely even eights. Like I think they all finished within five seconds of each other. Um, and I think the good news is that this is being recorded and we'll, you'll have access to our slideshow too. So you can look at this at a later date. Um, so like our stroke rate is low. I mean, I don't really think anyone really raced that much above a 31 or a 32 for a 5k race. Um, and we basically just, you know, we put some more experienced athletes in the stern. Uh, we had novice slash U17 group um, or like rising novice slash U17 group um, in the the bow four. Um, and we just wanted them to kind of like race as hard as possible. Um, the other part of this, I would say, is that we um, have seven amazing coxswains and we wanted to give them all the opportunity to kind of race down the Charles um, a few times. And, and, you know, we invest heavily in our coxswains because if they're out there giving different messaging than we are, you know, giving to the rowers, then it kind of is just this like, you know, constant contradiction. Um, I think all of our coxswains work really hard to try to understand it, um, whether that means erging on their own or watching video on their own. They're very invested in um, what the rowers are doing. So. Um, and I think that that, so there's a question in the chat about like where, you know, when and where we would mix a boat. And I'd say like, you know, the, the more success they have, like, I mean, we, we use their success to teach more success. So like, you know, we try and, and keep, you know, put athletes together, right? Like I would say good athletes who can row well, we try and let them also be part. I mean, like, I don't want to say that they're like, you know, we don't want to hurt anybody, but we really try and mix talent in the beginning of the season. You know, if a boat has flow, you know, unless it's going into a final, like, you know, we're really trying to like spread 
knowledge and well and 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 sort of talent around and we sort of use that as a as a teacher um so you know we don't try and just keep folks that click together I, we make a mental note of that like this is a lineup that gels this is something that we not a concept we want to revisit um but again like we try and and sort of spread spread that around more than sort of and i think we've also like been like we've shot ourselves in the foot sometimes like if we've tried to like you know looking at between regionals and nationals like if there's athletes that have been improving steadily going through regionals that we just are you know like i think this year we tried to make sure we we kept our eyes open to every single athlete that was improving because i think that um you know we we name a national squad we don't name a nationals like lineup early you know we'll say all these athletes are traveling to nationals I mean, that's like a lesson we've learned pretty hard. Yeah. Really, really hard. Yeah. And this is like just, you know, another shot. I mean, you can see like the blade work, you know, this this boat is going to win a national championship, but this blade work, you know, there's, we're, but we're not like, I think that's part of it. Like, we're just not perping and sitting here and like, you know, you can, you can work on technique all the time, but like if your boat sits on the line and it's like, well, we're not really technical, like, and they, then you you know, you've ruined it for them, right? Like if they think they're not technical because you, you know, you sort of told them. Yeah, and this board came together, like I think they, at their first few races, it was just very like nitpicky and they were like, you know, you know, really just like critical of what was going on in the boat. And then we were just like, you guys are incredibly strong <laughs> athletes, right? Like you just have to kind of wrap your head around that and like, don't be afraid to go with it. And I think they, you know, really were brave at points and that bravery, I think, paid off sometimes. But like, I think they could have sat there and been like, oh, this doesn't like, this was definitely a group of people that could have sat there and been like, well, it doesn't feel good. And you're like, well, it doesn't have to feel good. It just has to go fast. Like, you know, and I understand like, maybe that's a, a broader criticism of like, you know, like this kind of big boat American style, whatever. But like at the same time, like, you know, they're going to go on, they're going to row somewhere else and they're going to have had fun and they're going to have had sex, success and, and they can, you know, really refine it. And, you know, I think, you know, we don't want technical ballerinas in our program. We want fierce racers. And that's like kind of like, you know, it is what it is for us. Um, this is just in case anybody wanted to know what drills we do, <laughs> because sometimes people ask that at conferences, but these are the ones we do. We like really like to collect their bodies and and have a you know unified approach. And we sometimes we do some catch drills, you know. Sometimes we do some gunnel, some gunnel pauses too, you know, yeah. just sure that they're like and they have to understand where the gunnel is because sometimes they just stop wherever they want in the air. So. I think sometimes for and I would say like we do this, you know, again like we're working against weather, water, tide, all these things. I think you know, in the beginning, it's just about getting people up and running. And like, I think that's another part of it. It's like not, you know, so going and getting people rowing. And then, you know, it just so happens that as our season carries forward, the water gets better, you know, the rowing, we can start to refine so we can move that way too. So, um, so that's it. <laughs> Also, please ask questions. I don't know if we'll just ask any questions that you have. Cause yeah, that was uh, that was awesome, ladies. Um, do you do you think the video gets include the videos get included? Um, yeah, they should be. Things? I think we they're okay. they're they're in the. Um, what do you say? Don't people have access to the slideshows? I don't know if it got dropped in or we sent ours in. We, just so everybody understands, like we literally like Heidi's in um, her house and um, I had Zoom kindergarten all week. So this was, we tried. Um, oh yeah. Cor we have Cor a couple um, of, we have a couple of questions oh, about four. Yeah. Can't, we can't tell you if you, if you race the force uh, and you race uh, against us, we can't tell you what our core strength is. <laughs> um, How do you focus on developing core strength? Uh, I guess like the one would be every day. Um, and then, you know, 
sometimes it happens before practice. Sometimes we, our practice schedule was shifting for a while. So like we would, it would shift by 15 minutes. So we would have to go, you know, as a warm up or, or after. Um, and then how do you develop, how do you focus on developing core strength? I think like, you know, I think sometimes people can go through 12 dozen ab exercises, right? Like they'll print something off, but I think something that's going to focus on balance, sitting up, um, making sure that there's, you know, flexibility involved. I would say. Yeah. Like, I mean, very truly we do like plank, right side plank, left side plank, you know, we just do it on repeat. I think you know, one of the things, yeah. One of the things we learned early on is like also making sure, um, you know, like if somebody can't hold the plank well, then you have to like stop them. So that's like, you know, they have to just do it for as long as you can do it well and then come off. So like, if you're doing your plank, you're doing like 20 seconds of good plank, taking a five second pause. And then, you know, as they get better, kind of just lengthening out that stuff. So, you know, okay, we, I mean, our core strength, I think is actually very simple. Um, I'm sure we could send you some kind of variation if you need it. Um, so yeah, you can always email our email is in the chat. So yeah. please just email us and we'll send our ideas. Great. And then we had the next one was what is some language you like in coaching, teaching the catch? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this again, wait in. Yeah. Don't ask us I, that. I, I think the catch is like something that I don't know, I, like we're not really that good at. Um, but I would say that we talk about getting the blade down to the water. We talk about making sure that you're connecting in the last little bit of the recovery, um, staying relaxed at the catch, relaxed but supported. Really, like, I think talking about like that feeling of grabbing the water, like taking, like kind of like taking it out from under, you know, like just, you know, getting aggressive about it. Cause I think that helps them with the idea of like scooping back, reaching, like taking a long stroke and then really kind of, you know, taking the water from, taking the water from other people. Um, it's kind of a fun way to talk about it just so that they're like really getting up and in. Um, I don't know. I, talking about like, you know, also we do try and like when we're doing catch drills, like have them work on a lightness and quickness. And you know, when we, when we do, we, you guys probably know more about the catch than I do. I like the take the water from other people. That's yeah, uh, really solid. <laughs> but like you said, you don't want ballerinas, right? You want. No. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, the next question is kind of about commitment. You know, the, this coach has struggles to get athletes to commit to regattas. Uh, how do you guys develop a culture of commitment? I think it's taken a long time. Um, and I think it, you know, when we first got to Greenwich, it was, um, it wasn't like by any means bad, but it just was like, I think the understanding of the why that they're there, like asking them why, right? Like setting, they have to set goals, but they also have to set a commitment to each other because that's what a team is. Um, and I think at the beginning of every year, we have them sign a uh, team contract to each other. Um, they sign a, uh, what am I think? Like, what's the word? Code of conduct a code of conduct, a code of conduct, um, for each other of just, you know, there's repercussions for if they have unexcused absences or, um, like last second absences that regattas, because that's really expensive and it's unfortunate for everybody else who's involved. Um, but I think making sure that they really do understand the why and they understand what they're getting out of it. Um, you and know, maybe also celebrating the success. Like I think celebrating the success of everybody, like we are genuinely thrilled. Like, I, I think sometimes like, you know, we love going to Saratoga. I know this is sort of, we love going to Saratoga because we can race a 5B in its own category or a 4B. And like, that is like an important, like we, we love that boat, right? Like we, that's, that boat is the showcase piece at some point because that's our depth. And we really like, we talk about that and we talk about how that really matters to us. Um, and when we have conversations with that, like those boats, like, you know, that matters. Um, I think, I just want to go back because I think in that question, it was sort of, um, you know, and we're very upfront, like the reason why we are going to change lineups until the very, you know, last second is because 
you can make changes and get faster to the last second. So I think that's why we're not, you know, settling on a lineup in March. We're, you know, really constantly reevaluating again. And that's, you know, somebody had asked how, how you would keep people motivated. That was adorable. Oh yeah, well, I think I've reached the limit of my- 53 anyway, minutes. So that's I, yeah, um, so that's what I was say, like that's how you also keep the people motivated from top to bottom is like that you, you believe that they can make a change and, you know, and they've seen that, like, you know, there have been switches up until the last minute. Nice, you said you love going to Saratoga, so we could stop recording now. You've checked the box for Chase, so. We do, we really do. <laughs> Um, the next one was just kind of the management of getting everybody on the water uh, as a program it looked like with 53 varsity athletes um, just kind of might be maybe what are some of your practice logistics like so we um, alternate land days with the men's team um, and that there's always going to be one day whether it's novice girls, novice boys, varsity girls, or varsity boys that they keep one and a half to two eights on land. Um, it is really crowded on our waterway because it's not only us, but it's also um, Greenwich Academy, Brunswick, um, you know, Rural America, Greenwich, you know, there's a lot of programs that are on the water at the same time as us. And so that's something that for safety wise, we made that commitment that we would have those two eights on land. Um, we are fortunate enough to have a strength trainer um, who works with those athletes on those days. Um, and so they'll do a combination of whether it's like weights or core or um, uh, like an art workout or a run on those days. Great. Um, and then another kind of uh, technical question. Uh, if you could have one concept for the athletes to nail, what do you think is the biggest technical contributed to your boat speed? And sorry if you've already answered this because you spoke about the catch. I, I mean, I would say at, at this moment, like, I don't know. I think we just, we want them to just go hard, right? Like, like pull really, really hard, like push and pull really hard. Just pull hard because obviously that's not good technique. Um, but I think making them, uh, you know, understand that if they're starting with like a huge effort, right? Like if they're investing every single thing into each stroke, then it's easy to correct them technically after that. I know that's like a little bit of a backwards way to answer that, but. No, I think it's circular. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, how do you deal with a parent who takes their child out of regatta at the last minute? parent question this is good um this would definitely be something that would really bother us as well um and i think it would you know i think it would bother the athletes as well because it's their boat that's you know it's impacting their boat speed um so i think we have a parents meeting at the end at the beginning of every season um and we also have a code of conduct right so um in that code of conduct, like it's, you know, you're treating coaches with respect, you're treating the other athletes res with respect. And I think if that's something that is consistently happening where an athlete is being pulled at the last second, um, then we would pull that parent in for a meeting and say, hey, this is really impacting everybody as well. And um, if it's consistently happening, then we would talk about like their future with the program. If it makes more sense for them to be in a more recreational program. I hope that's okay. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Anyone with some last questions, last three minutes? Um, do you guys have your email addresses in the chat? Uh, uh, we can put them in right now. Yeah. Do we, which chat do we, do you want us to do? Like the Q and A or the chat chat? The chat chat and just make sure it's to everyone. Okay. I was about to put mine in, but you did it. I got you. Heidi's faster. No. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Uh,
obviously everybody who came feel free to reach out to them uh they see they said they see they would be very willing to share um yeah we can, and, we can yeah just email us for core workouts perfect but don't don't be surprised if they're very simple <laughs> <laughs> but that's the theme of the talk so that's perfect so they are simple um, people <laughs> simple people <laughs> doing a simple job that's a i'm a lot of times we all overthink it so that's really great to hear actually i, like <laughs> I overthink it constantly so i'd just like to ask abby young if she's listening what it's like to live in florida as i look out at my um it's so cold here yeah what is i guarantee like? you the answer is much better than being there <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, a very it's different <laughs> oh man great so well i'm gonna close this out so that the next presenter can hop in and practice if that's all right um, yeah the emails are in the chat if you just scroll up oh you sent it to hosts and panelists ah uh, oh, whoops here let me do send to it's also at the end of the presentation it's yeah. here i'll do there it there you go there you go um so hopefully everybody has those now Oh, thank and you. I will hit stop record. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Good to see you guys.